Hey guys, John here with another video for you. Today we're going to be inside Lightroom 6 and we're going to be looking at the photo merge feature, particularly talking about creating a panorama inside of Lightroom. Uh, so I picked this photograph for a very specific reason and that is because a few years ago I actually created a video using this photograph in Photoshop to create a panorama. So you'll be able to kind of see, I'll put a link in the description below so you can watch that video if you haven't seen it in a while. Um, and you can just see how the workflow has kind of changed since using Photoshop, or since Lightroom has added this feature to Lightroom 6. Uh, so to get started, we're just gonna do some quick edits here. Uh, nothing too fancy. I'm just gonna bring the exposure up a little bit and drop the highlights down, maybe add some shadow detail to that foreground and maybe just a little bit of contrast. So that's all we're gonna do to the basic tab. I am going to come up here to the radial filter and because I just wanna add a little bit more to this foreground. So I'm gonna drop a radial filter in, maybe do something like this here, just a weird odd shape, just to get some kind of texture and lighting to this foreground. So I'm gonna increase the shadows, maybe add the exposure there, and then I'm gonna click on invert. And what that does is it just kind of lights this bridge a little bit better. Um, I'm going to actually, so I could like, you know, change the way this lights, but I'm just going to click on kind of a neutral color here and just let it kind of keep the oh, basic overall um, white balance of the image there. So that's just a very simple edit. Um, I think it does need a little bit of noise reduction, so I'll bump that up maybe just like 20% or so and we can bump up the sharpening and maybe just a little bit there just to give a little bit more definition um, so that's it that's that's all i'm doing to edit this photograph at least for now we might have a couple things to do once we get the panorama but uh but that's that's all i really need to do so i'm just going to select the other three images that make up this panorama and i'm going to click on sync now the only stuff we touched was the basic tone tab and a radial filter uh, and maybe some white balance. That's about it. That's all we really touched within this edit. Um, we don't want the radial filter to be synced because if we do, it'll be plopped into the sky in the other three images. So we don't want that to be synced. But everything else is fine because we either didn't touch it or we want it to be synced. So let's click on synchronize. And what this will do is it will bring all of those edits from the basic tab over to this. But we're not bringing over our radial filter because we had that unchecked. So now with all four images selected, what we're going to do is right click and then click on or hover over photo merge and you can choose HDR or panorama today we're gonna to be doing panorama we'll do HDR in a future video um, but what you'll get is a panorama merge preview window and this window is gonna have a few different options you have auto select projection um, so this is selecting how the image is basically displayed when it's stitched together and you can see here this looks pretty good um, you get a nice uh, seamless panorama and everything looks good uh, the cylindrical option is going to do something it's pretty similar to the spherical it looks like it's just creating maybe a little bit more stretched out um, it looks like about the same amount of information it just looks like the perspective has been stretched out and then the perspective option is just completely useless now the difference between these three the spherical option is great for anything that has a wide angle of view and essentially what is being done is your images are being displayed on the inside of a sphere. So if you're sitting down and you're looking at the inside of a sphere, that's kind of what your images are kind of going to be displayed like. The cylindrical option does it the same way but uses a cylinder instead of a sphere. So you end up getting better vertical lines. Your vertical lines stay straight when you use a cylindrical perspective projection when you use the spherical projection all of your lines are going to kind of pick up curvature because a sphere is curved in all directions whereas a cylinder has straight verticals and curved horizontals a perspective is 
used if you have a lot of straight lines think like architecture basically what you're doing is you're getting a, a completely flat plane to place your image on so everything is going to um, remain straight how however or it's going to try to keep all of your lines straight so however if you have uh, a very wide angled panorama image you're going to end up with something that doesn't really work very well. So I'll just leave it at spherical here and then I'll just click on merge. And that's it. That's really all you have to do to create a panorama in Lightroom. It's really simple. Uh, of course the simplicity of it does mean that you have some drawbacks. You know it's not as powerful as taking it into a program that's dedicated to make panoramas. And, you know, in Photoshop, you have a little bit more control over the final image. But, um, you know, for how quick and easy this is, it's pretty amazing. You can see here, we did lose a little bit of the detail in that foreground. Uh, so I am going to drop that radial filter back in to the foreground here and just uh, do the same thing I did before. Just bring up the shadows and the exposure and then just kind of you know place it where I think it needs to be placed here um, and then um, we'll just I think I need to just widen this a little bit something like this that's pretty good there uh, we'll drop this down actually you know what I think I'm kind of liking just a little touch of warmth on that that's kind of cool there I am also going to grab the uh, angle tool here and just make this bridge uh, level and I'm going to bring this in. Now if you notice back in uh, the panorama view mode you had an option I just leave it checked and I always forget you know that I have it checked but essentially it's an option to allow Lightroom to crop your panorama automatically or for you to just place it in there but it doesn't really matter because you still have that full image so I just let Lightroom crop it and then if I want to change something, I can always go back into the crop overlay and change it. But just letting Lightroom do it uh, kind of makes it just that much easier to simplify the workflow. Um, so this is pretty much done, guys. I, I think, uh, you know, it's the Lightroom has done, or Adobe has done a really fantastic job of making a very simple way of stitching together some basic panoramas within Lightroom. You don't have to leave Lightroom at all. And you don't need a plugin, you don't need anything. It's it's very, very easy and uh, you know it, it just changes the workflow. Just watch the video that I did before uh, years ago and you'll see how much different this is. So have you used the panorama mode? Um, share a comment below and let me know your experience. If you've done a photo you can link to it in the comments as well. I'm happy to take a look at what you've done. So Thank you for watching. If this is your first time watching Figuropathy on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And if you did like this tutorial, click the like button because it does help uh, more people find it. And if you liked it, odds are other people will as well. So thank you again for watching. I will be back again soon. Bye for now.